like I say, shout out to all of my brothers and sisters out there in social media land. This is indeed a great day to be alive. This is the day that the Most High have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We got a lot of snow here in Kansas City, Missouri, so we got a little bit of leisure time right now. We're going to pick back up a biblical black history. And we ain't got the brothers here to ask them no questions, so I'm sure we'll get another couple of videos out of this. Well, we're going to pick back up. <clears throat> Let's see if we got anybody on the line. A young king just coming in. Shouts out to you, King Richard. We're going to pick back up with this biblical black history. I'm sure some of the brothers come online, they're going to see some things that they didn't know. Going to be exposed to some things that they know. One of the things that's being taught right now from a historical standpoint is that um, Esau is white people. If you get the history mixed up, then you ain't going to be able to you're not going to be able to know where things fit in. So we're going to uh, we're going to go into this on this morning. I'm going to be coming out of this morning with some very valuable information out of this book right here. This is a this is a KJV Bible, but it's a Dakes annotated reference Bible, and this Bible here has so much information in it. I'm sure that we're going to expose some of our brothers and sisters to some things that they never knew when it came to history. Because as I said before, biblical history, uh, not from the standpoint of the Bible. When we say biblical history, we're talking about, uh, we're talking about all of the ancient texts and holy scrolls. Because we've come to associate the Bible with the truth of uh of the histories of the people on the planet because contained in the Bible are these particular stories. They don't go into as great detail, uh, but then again, we can't put everything in one book. So, so when we start talking about biblical black history, we're talking about going all the way back to the time uh, before it ever even was an Israelite. So, and then we're going to track the history of the nations so that we can be able to rightfully divide not only the, the, the scriptures, but we're going to do it so that we can be able to rightfully divide the things that we see in this world as it relates to the people. So to all of my brothers and sisters that have leisure time to hang in there around the video, uh, hope that you'll tag somebody that may not know and uh, tag somebody with the video and then uh, and we'll take off running from there. So one of the things that we want to do, I want to open this video up with an intro song, kind of give us, a, uh, it's still plenty of our people that that don't know, they don't have no idea, you see. Now, we start talking about biblical black history and dealing with one people, then you're going to understand that it's three classes of people that will come out of the loins of Shem, according to the scripture. One class of people that will come out of the loins of Shem would be the Ishmaelites. Another class of people that will come out of the loins of Shem would be the Israelites. And another people that will come out of the, the loins of Shem would be those people that were not Shem's children that would be connect uh, that were connected by blood. But they would be those that would choose the ways of the the descendants of Shem through the hands of the Israelites. And so now you start talking about your religious constructs. 
but we don't classify uh, per se the ROCC as that extension that would be connected to the Shemites or Israel. We don't classify the ROCC, which is uh, the Roman Catholic Church. So we don't connect that because those are false religions that have been born in the earth. Now we know that Roman, Roman Catholicism uh, has cloaked itself in what the world have come to know as Christianity. But when we start looking at the biblical history, we will understand that those that classified a people as Christians, those Christians were Israelites. You see, not only were those Christians Israelites that were called Christians, but those that would believe or choose the ways of Israel, Israelites, they would become Israelites through adoption. Being a Christian would completely cease. So, so we understand what people mean, but in this modern day that we're living in, these things have to be rightfully divided in order uh, for the truth to be received. So we know that we have what we call three religious constructs in this world. You got, uh, uh, you got Islam, and then you got, you got Israelite heritage, and then you got what they call Christianity. And so we got to be able to historically be able to identify all of these things in order to separate the people from uh, whatever it is that that we're seeking to learn. So we're going to start this song up. We're going to start this video off with, with an intro song. This intro song is called Come Home With Me. It is a recalling of an understanding that the people have forgotten. And it's recalling our people through the guise of history and the things that transpire with a particular people. And that's why when we start looking at these curses and these other things, what we're doing is we're narrowing things down to the place to where there's only one people that can fit into a particular class. And there are three classes of overall people on the earth that were responsible for producing all of the nations. Out of each one of these nations would come a multiplicity of nations. And they have to be identified so that we don't get our wires crossed. And if we have any brothers and sisters that happen to chime in on the line, and it's something that they view differently or something that they disagree about, then uh, then that's an open forum for discussion. Because we're only going to use the scriptures. We're not going to use things that men teach. We're not going to use doctrinal things. We're going to use the scripture uh, as it's written. So let's go forward with the uh, intro song. Yeah, it's Kiyat. It's just like, yo, it's music. Take me to walk around the hood and show you how the curses all over my people. Come on home with me. Where the blocks are messed up. Crack streets, cops are messed up. Crack things, cops arrest us. No probable cause, man, they might contest us. Come home with me. When people look like each other, no, they don't care, man, they fight each other. Over bright cheek colors, crips and bloods, yo, they smite each other. Over flags, they don't like each other. Come on home with me. When people get shot every day, blood spill on the block where they stay, on the block where they play. Double Dutch and hot scotch down the way. Eat bruise, you make it hot every day. Come on home with me. On every block, there's a church. People search for the truth and it hurts. They say they go to the liquor store, get drunk and it's worse. They suck, no, I did they curse. Come on home with me. Well, we can get garbage for cheap. We don't care, cause that's all we eat. Chinese food everywhere, as far as the eyes can see. Chinese is all about free. Come on home with me. To where the doors hang over hinges. Drunk parents, man, they hang over bitches. Kids scattered around. Look at you like it's ain't your business. No wonder why I hang on my fridges. Come 
go home with me. When Sean Bell got killed like an animal, 50 shots and quickly dismantle you. That's how they handle you. They'll let you bleed and won't even bandage you. So hold style, quickly spread you. Come on home with me. Israel, sing along with me. Crazy, I walk along with you. The one that's gonna bring us home from our captivity. He is saying, just come home with me. So come home with me. Scattered to four corners, channeled by slave owners. Handled like savage monsters, the broken promise hunts. Ain't it all with prominence in this mental piranha pit? Analyzed and pondered this to see how thick the drum is. In a room where they dig real like kids, like Blade Runner. Overwhelmed, spike the rulers, pursue us like gang hunts. Two maneuvers like a god of rain, who's remain under the radar of the beast who changed the slaves. Of people lost and hidden, too in love with the forbidden. Before our enemies were smitten from cops to past lynchings. 80% of prisons known for much dissension. Minds held in suspension by the illusions of the system. Crack sales to clone and disorderly homes. See the sickest skills honed in these criminal zones. The blessings and the curses of the Israelite nation. And the battles will be facing they hood situation. Look what they gave us, how they made us, how they played us. We under curses, can't no man or woman save us. Look how they slaved us, shackled and chained and hanged and maimed us. And if we lay the blame, we gotta blame us. We lead a sick of selling STDs, diabetes, and new cases of HIV. What's even worse, we even kill each other. We kill our own brother. Y'all on the block, we kill a brother for the wrong color. The forsaken, the hidden nation. Got captured up and taken by these savages and pagans. And what about Oscar Grant? And what about G. Will? And what about Sean Bell? And what about Emmy Steele? This is Israel. That means this is real. There's too much going on up in this world to keep your lips sealed. I live in this field. And if it's God's will to put me on a better field and kill, then it was God's will. And I take orders like a good soldier. The overseers that oppose us will get smoked just like a good dozer. It's me against the world, like Pac said. And to God pick us up and take us home just like the Ox said. So the brothers just say, come home with me. Where the blocks are messed up, the crack streets, cops are messed up, crack fiends, cops arrest us with no probable cause, yeah, they might contest us. That only happens to the Negro. Come on home with me. Where we can get garbage for cheap, we don't care because that's all we eat. Chinese food is everywhere as far as the eye can see. He said, just come home with me. That's the Negro again. He said, oh, oh. Where uh, on every block there's a church. People search for the truth and it hurts. The same day, go to the liquor store and get drunk and it's worse. We slumped on a dead end curse. Come on home with me. That's, that's Israel. That's the Negro. Okay? That's black people. In every, every block in a community, it's a church. And they go to church and come home to the same depressed situation, which leads us to liquor stores and drug abuse and all of that. Come on home with me. This is a particular people that these things is happening to. They're not happening to everybody. And it makes no difference whether you call yourself an Islamic man, a Muslim, or an Israelite man, or a Christian man. If you are a black man, we're tied together through circumstances that come to help us identify who we are as a people. He said, where the doors hang over hinges. Drunk parents, man, they hang over benches, and the kids are scattered around, and they look at you like this ain't your business. No wonder why I hang on my fringes. You see, he's talking about a particular people, a particular people where the children's parents are out of order because of bad situations, and the children are left to themselves just running around doing whatever they want to do, and there is no correction for them, period. He's talking to me, this thing's going to only happen to one people. And as we said before, it makes no difference if you call yourself a Muslim, an Israelite, or a Christian. If you're black, these things are happening to you. Because they're not happening to the pale-faced Muslim. And they're not happening to the pale-faced Christian. And so there's only one people that these things are happening to. He said, look at what they gave us, how they played this. Now let's go back. He said, oh, when Sean Bell got killed like an animal, 50 shots, they quickly dismantle you. That's how they handle you. They'll let you bleed and they won't even bandage you. Some old style, they quickly to scramble you. That's our people. 
that'll get shot 50 times and won't even receive no help, get hit by a car, and they won't even call the ambulance. That's our people. That don't happen to no other people on this planet. He said, so he said, look what they gave us, how they made us, and how they played us. We under curses, can't no man or woman save us. We under curses because we won't listen to the right people. We keep listening to our enemies. We won't listen to our brothers. He said, we're under curses. Can't no man or woman save us. <laughs> look how they gave us. Look, look how they played us. What they gave us. How they made us. we under curses. Can't no man or woman save us. Look how they slaved us. Shackled, chained, hanged, and maimed us. <laughs> you see? These things happen to one people. One people. So, when brothers is putting out these songs, it's to resur resur resurrect our, our memory. Even contained in the Willie Lynch letter to the Europeans that taken our names away from us. He said, our experts have warned us of a phenomenon that the mind has a strong drive to correct itself if it can touch a substantial historical base. And that's the purpose of these things coming forth. You see, the mind has the power to correct itself if it can touch a substantial historical base, namely that that comes as a result of slavery. Slavery is a substantial historical uh, base that can recorrect the thinking of a people. Because slavery makes you understand, hey, these people that was made slaves out of, where did they come from? It'll cause you to start backing up. Well, if African people sold them into slavery, then surely we're not African people. So everything backs up. Well, if we ain't African people, how did we get in Africa in the first place? And what was the circumstances that caused us to have to leave our own homeland and then run into a place where the people hated us? That's a substantial historical base. Because if you call yourself an Islamic man, you have to understand that if you reside in North, Central, and South America, you understand that you can't find nowhere in the history books, in the Bible, or the Holy Quran, where the sons of Ishmael were sold into worldwide slavery. If you call yourself a Christian and you are a black man, you can't find nowhere in the Bible to where it declares that a Christian nation was broken up and sold and sent into worldwide slavery. You can't find that nowhere. But when you start looking at the history of a people, this is what happened to the history of a people who forgotten their name. So, so you know, and we don't tell nobody what they can or what they can't do. But in this particular hour, the truth is going to go forth as the Messiah said. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. But I'm going to say this, the, you, the truth will make you free based on your ability to receive it. Because the people that he was telling that to, they didn't have the ability to receive the truth that was coming at them. And many of our brothers won't have the ability to receive the truth that's coming at them either. Even though you see these things in your everyday life. And we're constantly trying to compare ourselves to the European man. Look at the track star. Look at the track star that got snatched down for smoking marijuana. And then look at the other one. They always want to put a comparison right there. But do you not understand that when you compare yourself one to another, you are not wise? Because you have to digress in order to compare yourself with another people. And we are always digressing rather than to be elevated. You see, when we start listening to each other as a people, then we can be elevated rather than listening to our enemies as they continuously reinforce our victimization by making us think that we are not equal. We are not an equal people. We are a peculiar treasure unto the most high, set high above all the other nations, and all of the other nations know these things. But when we forget our name and then we reject our name, he who spits on his birthright, there is no greater sin that a man can commit. And if you commit the sin of spitting on the face of your birthright, then God said you're doomed to destruction. So we're going to start by identifying the peoples on the earth. And then as we deal with these things, we will draw, 
we will narrow it down all the way. Because when we narrow it all the way down, there ain't but one people that can fit the circumstances of the Israelites. And even though Ishmael's our brother, Ishmael was not exposed to the same level of circumstances in this world because he didn't have the same purpose in this world. God had given us two completely different purposes. And he never went into that. Maybe it's because he had never strayed away from his purpose that his hand would be raised against every man and every man's hand would be raised against him. However, his brother, Isaac's children, they strayed away from their purpose. But ain't no Ishmaelite ever went through the circumstances that Israel would go through. So, so this is what we're going to look at, and we're going to start this up at Genesis, the 10th chapter, because all of the people on the earth come from three sons. Every last, every last people on the earth come from three sons, and you got to be able to fit every, all of the people that's on the planet right to this day are descendants of one of these three sons, and if you can't put the people in the right if you can't connect the people to the right family, then you're going to err. And this is what's so detrimental about the religious construct of Christianity. And I'm not talking about those who believe in, in the Bible and in the Messiah. Those that believe in the Bible and the Messiah, they may classify themselves as Christian, but if they walk according to these things, then they will become Israel by adoption. So we're not talking about Roman Catholicism who have blanketed the world. And on, on a mission to stamp all of that out by incorporating every people on the planet up under one world religion when that can't happen like that. But if you can't hear the things that are coming out of the scripture that come from the mouth of your brother, if you can take Rod Parsley's word, John Hagee's word, if you can take Chuck Swindoll's word, Charles Stanley's word, if you can take Michael Youssef's word, David Jeremiah's word, you can take Joyce Meyer's word, T.D. Jake's word, Creplo Dollar's word, you can take all of these people's word who are mishandling the scripture. And then you reject what your brother is saying when he's showing you everything word for word in the scripture. It's to your own destruction. He who God sends speaketh the words of God. God giveth not the spirit unto that man by measure. That's John chapter 3 verse 34. John 8 47 declares, he who is of God will hear God's word. You see? So you got to be conscious of who you're listening to. And if you're listening to the wrong people, then you're going to err. When you understand that the descendants of the slaves came from somewhere, ships was a mode of transportation to remove people far from the borders that they were familiar with. When you take a people far from their borders and put them in a certain place, and you strategically change their name. And, and we as brothers and sisters, we can see that all of these things have transpired even according to the history books that they have indoctrinated us with. You don't have the sense enough to ask yourself the question, where were the slaves coming from? Well, okay, the history books in this educational department tell you that the slaves came from the banks of West Africa. And the Africans sold other Africans into slavery. Well, that's complete foolishness. Because of why would a people sell another people? You see, the reason why it's like that is there are games being played that you don't understand that the modern, the, 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 the ancient so-called Africans who are Hamites are not the same people as Israelites. When you start asking yourself questions, then you say, well, if the Israelites were not Hamites, what were they doing over there in Hamite territory? Where was the land at? Because God said that he had given his people land. And then you start backing up. You say, well, if they weren't the Hamites, well, where was they laying at? And you look at what was happening historically in 70 AD. The Romans came and sacked Jerusalem. And the people in Jerusalem were commanded to flee. 
into the mountains, which is into the parts of what we call Africa, Hamitic lands. That's how they got there. These things are documented in the history books of right now. So we're running all the way down to the um go on and greet your brothers and sisters, big bro. Oh, yeah. I gotta use make use yeah. bathroom right quick. It's big bro's Shalom. birthday. Shalom, brothers and sisters. What I about greet people you. that don't know what shalom means? I greet you with peace. Peace and love. Praise be to the most high. I just want to, I'm so thankful. You know, sometimes you can get so thankful that, I mean, it just blows my mind. I have, I've gotten a, another day older. Praise be to the most high. Brothers and sisters, these messages that are coming to you all, they're not just, just they, they're supposed to be coming to you all. They're for you all. We must listen. This is a great birthday for me because I get a chance to be with my little brother. I get a chance to, you know, just be a help wherever I can. You know, just try to love somebody. You know, I don't uh, get on the cameras that much because, you know, I just don't, but praise be to the most high, I'm thankful <laughs> this day that I, I'm able to be able to get on the camera, maybe to be an encouragement to someone or what have you, but these messages that are coming are serious. This is our life, a life that we have never known. Now we have a chance. We have a chance by the spirit of the most high to learn who we are as a people. We have sucked in and taken on everything in this world, and you still don't know. Well, let's learn then. It's time to learn. You know, it's time to gather yourself. <laughs> let's learn. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's learn Praise be to the most high, you brothers and sisters. You all have a wonderful, blessed day, joyful day. For that it truly is. Yep. Man. Facts. Man. Facts. 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 Thank you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I might not do too much. Elder, <laughs> Elder Moneo said he got your back. Oh, oh, that's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to take our running. And as we said before, one of the things that Elder Moneo, King Bashar says, Happy Day, King. Yes, sir. One, one of the things that Elder Moneo, he keeps stressing. He said, Man. You got to make them brothers understand and see clearly that Esau is our brother. He is not the white man that our young kings is out there on street corners preaching about. And, and we're going to show you that. We're going to show you that. I'm telling you, I'm guaranteeing you that right out the gate, you're going to be exposed to some things that you never knew before. That's coming straight out the book. So let's take off running. And let's look at this for, I want to establish this for importance, for importance of uh, uh, history's sake. To any brothers and sisters that's watching, I want you to remember this. Let's go, to, we're going to go to first, we're going we're gonna to read the first verse of three different chapters before we start. And we're going to show you something. First verse of three different chapters. So you got some brothers and sisters. Here it goes. Genesis chapter 5. This is the book of the generations of Adam. We're going to go to Genesis 10th chapter. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah. Now we're going to go to the New Testament. And we're going to go to the first chapter of the book of Matthew. First chapter of the book of Matthew. And it says, this is the book of the generations of Yahshua, Hamashiach, or Jesus the Christ, the son of David, 
the son of Abraham. So when you start looking at this being the book of the generations, you understand how important history is. You don't know where a thing is coming from. You don't know where a thing is going. So he said, this is the book of the generations. So generations is coming from the word genetics, which comes from the word genes, and they are tied together. Because the gene, the genealogy of a particular people that's passing down through the earth, you got to have an understanding of what genealogy you are. This is the book of the generations of Adam. So it was important that all of the sons of Adam knew who their genes were connected to. Your purpose is going to be connected to your genetics because whatever uh, the Most High had created you to do, that's the thing that's supposed to funnel down throughout your lifetime. These are the generations of the sons of Noah three sons that we're going to look at. And then after that, he said, these are the generations of the Messiah. Because you have to be able to track the bloodline or the, 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 or the gene that he is coming from in order for him to line up with the things that were spoken about him about prophecy. Now, just imagine. Let's take the word Jesus Christ, for instance. Let's just take that just for instance for hypothetical sake. Now, most of the people that say Jesus Christ, they associate Jesus Christ with the person that's in the Bible. Now, from a Hebrew standpoint, you may say, may say Yahshua. Well, what you have to understand is that when you start dealing with genetics, you're talking about bloodline. You're talking about bloodline, you're talking about nationality or national identity. You're talking about ethnicity. So out of these particular things is going to come your name. And your name is going to be according to whatever your bloodline or your genetic pattern is. So the Hebrews will have a prophecy of Yahshua to come into the earth. Now, many of our brothers and sisters, uh, you say Yahshua, they think you're talking about somebody foreign. But in actuality, it's when you say Jesus Christ is when you're talking about somebody foreign. Because if you put the wrong person in the wrong place, then you don't get the same results. So... When it comes to my brothers and sisters, and I wish many of you would learn how to, how to deal with your brothers and sisters that are on this wavelength of thought because it's all that they ever taught, all, all that they ever been taught, and it's all that they ever know. So, so we look at the word Jesus from a translational standpoint. However, every name has a face that is put with it. You see? And we know that if a person's genealogy traced all the way back to being black people, you understand? And somebody comes along and changes a name and then puts another face on top of it, then surely you can't look to that particular thing to get the same results because you have now gotten your wires crossed. And so one of the things that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to be able to draw lines of distinction because, listen, you got to let the truth be told. Half of the world believed that Jesus was a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes. You got to be honest with that. Many of our brothers and sisters in church that have been put this image on top of that for, for many years. So in order for you to understand that even if it is an image, that the image is false, you have to understand the genealogy of a particular people and where they come from. When you see their genealogy and then you understand where they come from, then you know that there's no possible way for them to fit in this category. And that's why we want to deal with our brothers and sisters about not just living your life based on what you heard. We are to live our life based on what the scriptures say. Now the scripture says, as for my people, as for my people, they are destroyed from what they don't know. Well, it's automatic that we didn't know everything yes. because everything that our ancestors knew was taken away from them through slavery. You see? He says, so we have been destroyed because of an information that we are lacking. But it also says that it's not because the information is not made available. Everybody has access to the scripture. If they'll dig into there and find these things and then respond to them, he said, because you have rejected knowledge, that's the purpose that you've been destroyed. And this is why we say it's so important for us to start listening to each other. We destroy because we reject the knowledge that's coming at us. 
Even though we see the knowledge coming straight out of the Bible, we reject it. And God said, well, you know what? I got to reject you because it ain't your brother that you reject. Your brother just showed you what I said concerning my word. Now, you reject him, you lose, you lose the purpose that was given to you as a people to be a kingdom of priests unto me according to the laws that I have given you. He said, you lose the ability to do that. So it makes no difference whether you're a Christian or whether we're Islam. When we don't understand the category of people that we fit into, even though we're one people, we look alike, we got our ancestors got off the same boats, the same ships, we still reject that information when it comes to hold on to things that were taught to us by people that did not look like us. So let's dive into the video. We're going to go all the way back to the beginning. All right. This is when God started the world over again with Noah. It says, verse one of the 10th chapter of Genesis. Now, these are the generations of the sons of Noah. Noah had three sons. His eldest son was named Shem. His middle son was named Ham. And his third son was named Japheth. He said, and unto them, sons were born after the flood. Now, he's telling you that through these three people were going to come many more nations out of these three sons. And to them, sons would be born that would make up all of the people that's on the earth right now to this very day. So he starts off by identifying the lineage or the progenitors of these sons that will come through the loins of their fathers. The first one he starts off with is the youngest son. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Shem, uh, of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tiraz. And the sons of Gomer were Ashkenaz and Riphat to Gorma. The sons of Javan were Elisha and Tarshish, Kittim and dotting them. By these sons were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands. Everyone after his own tongue, after their families, in their nations. Now, this is the youngest son, Japheth. This is his lineage. Now, to the brothers and sisters that are on this thread, one of the reasons why our brothers are preaching that Esau is the white man or you know, the white man that the Bible devils uh, speak about is because they don't understand the lineage. Now, this is the youngest son, and his sons would, would carry his name and his purpose. Let's see what the names and the purposes of those boys would be. Let's see what the name and purpose of all of those boys would be. Let's go see. Let's see here. Now the purpose of those boys would be this. Cursed be Canaan. Blessed be the God of Shem. And the borders of Japheth would be enlarged. So you got Shem, you got Ham, and you got Japheth. Through these three classes of people, every person on the planet has to fit into one of these families. Now, how are you going to get the Bible right and put people in their right place? How are you going to understand the history of any people if you can't identify the people? You see? You see, these people give you the history that they want you to have, and then they feed that same history into your mind over and over and over and over and over and over and over again from the time you're a child into the time you're an adult. And then that particular thing that your mind was fed becomes as truth to you because you ain't been exposed to anything else. However, when you get exposed to the scripture, that thing is supposed to change your thought process by renewing your thinking. So... Now, we're looking at the, 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 the descendants of the youngest. Now, out of all of the people that I got on the, on the thread, what I want you to do is I want you to identify these people that I'm about to read, and I want you to tell me who these people are in the earth that you see today. Oh, 
Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tiras. These are the progenitors. That means these are the fathers of the nations that will come. Now, the sons that will come out of them, the sons of Gomer would be Ashkenaz, Riphat, and Togorma. The sons of Javan would be Elisha and Tarshish, Kinnanim, and Donanim. By these, by these sons that are born, the islands of the Gentiles would be divided into the, the island of the Gentiles. Well, many of in Christianity, you're still being taught that black people are Gentiles. You're still being taught that you are a people that came into God's family or came into God's covenant by faith in the Messiah from the outside of Israel. That's what you're being taught. He said, by these are the isles of the Gentiles established. Why is that important? Because this scripture right here will make you understand who, what people belong to the family of Gentiles. And if you can't identify yourself or fit into that family, then guess what? It has been narrowed down. Now you got only two places left that you can go. Door number one is closed. Now what I want you brothers and sisters to do, and this is just to make a point. I want you to tell me who are the modern day, who are the modern day children of Ashkenaz, Riphat, and Tagorma? Who are the modern children of Elisha, Tarshish, and Kittim, and Dottenham? Who are the modern day descendants? Who are these people? Now I'm going to give you a little time to answer. And if you can't answer who these modern day people are in the world, that's called Gentiles, if you can't answer that, then just put zero up there. I don't know. See, you got to be, we got to be able to identify who the people are and what family that they come from. Lest we find ourselves calling ourselves by a name that don't belong to us. And this is one of the things that we are doing. This is one of the things that we go through as a people. This is black history. And black history ain't talking about, we're talking about Negro history, Israelite history. You see? Most of us, most of us that are of Negro descent, we can immediately tell the difference between a Hamite and ourselves. We know that there's a distinct difference between the two. Yeah, so... So there we go. You know, y'all know periodically the video going to stop. The video going to pause. Y'all already know that. So if you allow yourself to be distracted by that, you always know the most high watching everything. He don't know who's trying to learn something and who ain't. Okay, so let's go here and let's show you. Because what we're going to do is we're going to have to be able to pull the cover off of each one of these sons so that we can know where we fit in as a people. When we understand where we fit in as a people, now we can look at the, the Bible through the eyes of the particular people that we have classified ourselves as. So let's go here. So it already told you about the sons of Japheth. So let's look at the sons of Japheth and let's look at the, 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 the destiny that was pronounced to Japheth. Remember that it says, Cursed be Canaan, blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and the borders of Japheth would be enlarged. So let's go and it says, Japheth, the word itself means enlargement. Or extension. This was true of him, for his posterity have spread all over the earth. Fourteen descendants and seven sons and seven grandsons are listed. The progenitor of the ancient Galatians, Gomer is the progenitor or the father of the ancient Galatians and Persians from which came the natives of Northern Europe known as the Gauls and the Celts. And in latter times, they were known as the Germans, the French, 
the Irish, the Welsh, the Britons, and various other Anglo-Saxon races. These all came from the three sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Riphat, and Togorma. Now, when you start looking at these sons that came from Gomer, there is one name that stands out above the rest because it's one name that is still being used in this modern terminology to identify a particular people, and that is Ashkenaz. We know that there is a people on the earth that called themselves by the name of Ashkenazi Jews. Well, these are the descendants of the sons of Gomer. And they are not black people. They are not melanated people. They are not people of Negroid descent. Why? Because these are the Gentiles that we are speaking about. The second son, Magog, is the father or the progenitor of the Scythians and the Tartars, whose descendants predominate modern Russia. Magog also a general name of the country north of the Caucasus Mountains, which were between the Black and Capsian Seas. The Caucasus Mountains, where you get the word Caucasian from. These are where these are where the descendants of Magog have their dwelling. The third son, which is Madai, is the father of the ancient Medes, Persians, and perhaps Hindus. Japhon, the fourth son, is the father of the Greeks, the Italians, the Spanish, the Portuguese, and other nations through Elisha, Tarshish, and Dodanim. Dodanim and Kidanim is identified with Cyprus and the Mediterranean coast. Now, when you start understanding the history of the Negro who resides in the Americas, you have to understand that these descendants of Maidai were of the Medes, the Persians, the Hindus. Javan was the progenitor of the Greeks, the Italians, the Spanish, and the Portuguese. Now, you have to understand that the Greeks are also classified as the Grecians, and the Portuguese were also the people that removed the so-called Negro from the banks of West Africa. The Greeks can be found in, let's go read it, the book of Joel. These are going to be found in the book of Joel. Let's get the book of Joel up there. Let me show you the Greeks. Joel chapter 3. For behold, in those days and at that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah. Now, behold, at that time when I shall reverse the slavery that Judah went into. He said, I'm also going to gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and I will judge them there for my people and my heritage Israel whom they have scattered among all the nations and parted my land. This is Negro history. This is Jerusalem and the children that resided in Jerusalem being ran out of their land and having their land conquered by a particular people. He said, they have cast lots for my people. And they have given a boy for a harlot, and they sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Yeah, what am I to do with the me, Otiri, Zadon, and all the coast of Palestine? Will you render me a recompense? 
And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried it into your temples, my goodly and pleasant things. The children also of Ju Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold into the hands of the Grecians. So when you start talking about the coast of Palestine, Tyre and Zidon, now you are talking about the descendants of the second son, which is Ham. We're in Hamitic lands in what they call the African lands because black people or Negro people were sold from the banks of West Africa into the hands of the Grecians. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians that you might remove them far from their borders. So there is a particular people that was removed far from their borders through the use of slave ships. These came at the hands of the progenitors of uh, the children of Javan who produced the Greeks and the Portuguese. Your history books in this modern day time right now will tell you that the people that took and sold, the people that bought you were, were European or Portuguese people. They were Gentiles. See, the scholars know these things. The scholars know these things. I'm not talking about the people that's responsible for your educational departments in this world. The scholars know these things. And then we have brothers and sisters like, like some one of my Christian sisters, was, she, said, she said, well, what difference do it make? All, this, all we got to do is just believe that Jesus is Lord. Well, you know what? If you don't understand the, the history of a people, then you'll be looking to the wrong person, calling the wrong person Jesus. You see, you calling somebody Jesus that the Bible ain't speaking about. You see, because the person nine nine out of ten times the people that these people are calling Jesus are Gentiles. They're the ones whose borders would be enlarged, whose posterity would spread throughout the earth. They're the ones who would blanket the whole earth, assuming the identities of other people that are on the earth. These things are contained right here in your books. So we showed you that the that the that the children, the children of Javan were the Portuguese and the Greeks. So let's pick right back up right there. The progenitor of the Greeks, Javan, is the father of the Greeks and the Italians and the Spanish and the Portuguese and other and other nations. Through Elisha, Tarshish, Dotadim, Kittim is identified with Cyprus and the Mediterranean coast. It says Tubal is the father of the Liberians, the Gregorians, Cappadocians, and other Asiatic and European races. Meshach is the father of Muscovite tribes that now inhabit Russia. Tiras is the progenitor of the Thracians and perhaps the Etruscans who migrated to Italy. So you know now that you cannot fit into a category where people are classified as Gentiles. By these sons, by these sons of Japheth were the nations of the Gentiles established. And we just showed you who the nations of the Gentiles were. They were divided in their own lands after their own languages. And see, we have been taught such hell-born doctrines that I remember when I challenged my pastor and said, I thought you said that we was Gentiles. Well, it wasn't nothing he could come back with because I said, it's say right here who Gentiles are. And unless you can tell me who these people are in the world that is talking about, you should not be teaching people that they're Gentiles because I have looked 
at who the offspring of these people are through their genetics. And you can't say that genetics don't matter when you got contained in Genesis 5. This is the book of generations, the book of the genetics. In Genesis 10, this is the book of the genetics. In Matthew 1, this is the book of the genetics. You can't say that the genetics of a people and the bloodline of a people don't matter when it's right there in the book. Many of our brothers out there teaching. Well, you know, when Paul went into uh, Rome, he was, he was dealing with, with, with Israelites that was Gentiles. Ain't no Israelite can ever be a Gentile. You can't classify an Israelite as a Gentile. You cannot put another man that's of another ethnicity into the category of somebody else's ethnicity. I understand what they mean, but it don't make no difference. We lost our history, our identity, and our heritage, and even our name, and didn't know anything. But there is no possible way that a Negro can be classified as a Gentile. A Gentile in the Bible is talking about a particular people that is on the earth. So many times we are in error. And our brothers are in error sometimes. When we say that Esau is the white man, that, that's error. Because we see that white men come through the loins of Japheth's sons. They're the progenitors of the European races and some of the Asiatic races and even the Hindus. They're progenitors of European people that had their dwelling. I, uh, in the land in Caucasus, where you get Caucasian from, that had their dwelling in these places. You can't never classify. A, a, a brother that don't understand his history and his heritage is classified as a lost sheep of the house of Israel. He can never be classified as a Gentile because of his ignorance. And when we allow ourselves to listen to the wrong people, we come up with a twisted mentality. Shouts out to you. The scene, Nazarite, give me Yahoo. So we know that it has been narrowed down for a Negro. You cannot fit into the same category as white people. You'll never be a white person. And ain't no white person can put themselves in your place neither. If the Bible tell you that the children were ran out of Jerusalem and then sold from the banks of West Africa, and entered into North Central South America, and they were as Negro uh, people that was black, then you know good and well that the same prophecy of the Messiah, according to Luke 21st chapter, verse 24, says that Jerusalem will be trodden down, the holy city will be trodden down by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles is complete. That means that the people that occupied the holy land will be pale-faced people. You see? But then again, you're listening to the wrong people. You're listening to pale-faced people who heaped up Christianity that teaches that the Jewish people are God's chosen people. When the Bible teaches that these people would be occupying the land while the true people were out of the land. That's black history, baby. It's time out for us digressing, always trying to compare ourselves. It was our father, Shem, that received the, uh, the purpose that blessed would be the Lord God of Shem. So now we move to another brother. One brother is out the way. We cannot be him. Now let's go see if we can fit into the category of another brother which would be the second brother. So let's go back to Genesis 10th chapter. And let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If you have a small understanding, these things are not hard to understand. These things are very simplistic in their nature. They're very simplistic. But the simplistic things are always the things that challenge your thinking and your understanding. So let's go back to Genesis 10th chapter. He started with the youngest son first to identify him. Now we're going to deal with the second son. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. 
and unto them sons were born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, Tiraz, the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Riphat, Togorma, the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, Donadim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after their own tongue after their own families and we've established this through the use of the scripture that all of these represent the European nations in this world. Now the sons of Ham now the sons of Ham are Cush Mizraim Put and Canaan and the sons of Cush were Sabah Havilah Sapta and Ramah and Sep Sep Septeca. And the sons of Rama were Sheba and Dedan. And could, so that, those are the sons right there. So let's go take a look and let's see if we can fit into the category of the sons of Ham. Negroes. I'm talking about the descendants of slaves. Okay, it says Cush is the father of of various Ethiopian tribes that settled south of Egypt and also overran Arabia, Babylonia, and India. Mizraim is the father of various Egyptian tribes. Mizraim means double. Tribes of double Egypt, that means upper and lower Egypt, called the land of Ham, came from him. It says the Philistines also came from Misraim. Put is the father of the Libyans. Other tribes in North, northern Africa. Canaan was the progenitor or the father of the peoples that settled mainly in Palestine, Arabia, Tyre, and Zidon. Remember what we seen in Joel. What have I to do with the Tyron and Tyre and Zidon and the coast of Palestine? For you have taken my silver and my gold and my goodly things and carried them into your temples. And you have sold the children of Judah, the children of Jerusalem into the hands of the Grecians, the Europeans. So now you're talking about the Africans, the, the, the Hamites, which are known as African people who were now responsible for selling another people into the hands of the European people. You see, that's written right there in the scripture. You see it for yourself. Where Tyre and Zidon come from, they are descendants of the ancient Hamites. It says, these nations are often mentioned in connection with Israel. Now, they're always mentioned in connection with Israel because these were Israel's enemies. They was always at war with the Philistines. They was all at, at war with the Babylonians. They always See, these were a people that were not the same. They were at war together. Now, here's the thing that you got to look at. If it says that Tyre and Zidon, who are the descendants of the ancient Africans or Hamites, if Tyre and Zidon and the coast of Palestine were the ones that were responsible for gathering the children of Jerusalem up and selling them into the hands of the Greeks and the Portuguese, what that means now through historical records of the scriptures and holy scrolls, which far predate any modern day history of educational departments of this world, then you understand that it was Hamites, those that we call Africans, and Europeans that put us into slavery, put a people into slavery. Now, one son had been blocked out. You can't be a European. Now you see that you can't be a Hamite. So the only class that you, a people that you can be Negro, is a descendant of Shem. 
Let's continue to read. The above study concerning the sons of Shem, Ham, and Japheth gives one gives one an idea of the origin of the various races of men and shows clearly that God's original plan was to have separate races of various colors and distinct types after the flood. It is plainly evident that God segregated and scattered the people abroad on the face of the earth, then divided the one land into islands and continents as it is today. Now let's look at the sons of Shem. Because as we said before, when you look at Strong's Concordance and you type in Ham, it will say Ham, the father of the dark-skinned races, but not the Negroes. He is the father of the Libyans, of the uh, Egyptians, the Ethiopians, and the Canaanites. He is the father. All of these things come out of this one particular family. He said, but he is not the father of the Negroes. Why? Because the Negroes come from the oldest son, whose name was Shem. Now let's go see. The sons of Shem, the father of the Elamites, who settled near the Persian Gulf. Asher, the father of the Assyrians. Amphis, Amphixad is the father of of the Israelites, the Arabians, the Edomites, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Ishmaelites, the Midianites, and other tribes. Lul is the father of the, the Lydians of Asia Minor and the Ludim of Chaldea and Persia. Aram is the father of the Armenians, later called the Assyrians. So now you have three classes of people that are break, broke, broken up. Now when we start looking at the table of nations that's dealing with the descendants of Shem, we understand that Shem was the oldest son. That Shem would also produce a son that would be called Eber, whose name would mean Hebrew. You see, this is where the whole world got its language from. The whole world was of one particular language at that time, and everybody spoke after the language that was given to the eldest son. But now in order, so, so we start talking about being a Hebrew, a Hamite cannot be a Hebrew. A European cannot be a Hebrew. So when you start talking about Abraham coming through the loins of Shem and then produces Ishmael, we see right there in the table of, of, of uh, uh, in the contents that Shem, uh, that Abraham produces his first son, Ishmael. Well, you can see right here clearly. This is why I be dealing with my Muslim brothers and I tell them ain't no need to argue. We are brothers and there ain't nothing that nobody can do about that. Our purpose might be different, but it's what it is. We both come from the same loins. It's the same thing. Let me tell you something. The Shemite, the, 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 the Ishmaelites are no different than Esau. Ishmael came out of the same loins of Abraham. Ishmael was just a, a half breed. It was a combination of a Negro and an African because his mother was Egyptian and his daddy was Hebrew. So it was a combination of that. Nevertheless, he still was spawned 12 princes, uh, uh, 12 nations, 12 from 12 princes because that was the promise that God had gave to Abraham concerning his sons. Now, when you look at Isaac, 
you will see that Isaac went through some of the same things. Isaac now got twin sons. One of them would be given, the covenant would be established with, and one of them, it wouldn't. Esau would not be classified as no white man. Esau is a Hebrew, come from the loins of Shem. So, some of those things might get a little... So, so my, my whole thing is that when we start looking at, at history, you're looking at the overall history, you got to ask yourself, brothers and sisters, in this system, how did slaves get into the Americas? How did slaves get into the Americas, and who was responsible for the slaves getting here? Who have had their foot on the slaves since they got here? And has the Hamitic man who conspired with the European man, have he received the same treatment as the Negro since he's been here? So, so we get back and we go back into identifying the people, identifying the people. So now you know who, now you know who Gentiles are and you know who Hamites are. Now you know where the Ishmaelites come from and you know where the Christian come from. Now you know where all these different people are broken up and where they come from. So now you have to be able to stand in there and identify. Okay, all roads have been narrowed down. And there are many things that have transpired. So we are going back to the beginning. So my thing is this. When you start talking about being able to identify a particular people, the people will be identified by their circumstances and by the things that they have done or the things that they have committed. In the same way that we see that the European, who is the sons or the descendants of Japheth, conspired with the sons of Ham to sell a people into worldwide slavery. You see, that's their purpose. That's the circumstances that they committed amongst themselves that nobody in this world can take away from them. When you start talking about who broke Israel up and who sent them into slavery, everybody can't line up. Everybody can't fit into the same category of the people that did it. When you start talking about what people rounded the Israelites up in Africa, everybody can't fit into that category. The Europeans can't fit into the category of rounding Israel up and selling them from the banks of Africa. But the African can't fit into the category of buying Israel and removing them far from their borders. Each one have their own set of circumstances that identify them as a people in the Bible. And then you have the people who were who, who these acts were committed against. It will be their circumstances that they go through even until this day that identifies them. So, let's go and pick up where we left off at. Let's pick up where we left off at in Deuteronomy 28. See, the circumstances are important. The circumstances are important. So we're going to take off where we left off at. And we're going to read verse 41 of the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. And out of those three sons come all the people that's on the earth. And you're going to have to be able to tell me if the sons of Japheth, Gomer, Meshach, Chiraz, Tubal, Kittim, Dottenim, Javon. You're going to have to be able to tell me if they can line up with these things. 
You're going to have to be able to tell me if the Ruskin, if the Muscovite, if the German, if the Celt, if the Irish, if the Ritz, if the French, the Italian, you go, the Scythian, the Persian, uh, the Britons, you, the Gauls. This, you're going to have to be able to tell me if they can identify with these circumstances. Because if they can't fit into these circumstances, then guess what? The road has become narrow. You're going to have to be able to tell me. If your Hamites, your African, your modern day Africans, you're going to have to be able to tell me if they can fit into these circumstances that have been put on a particular people. Verse 41 of Deuteronomy chapter 28. And thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. You got to be able to tell me. Did any of those people of the European nations and tribes, their whole country, you see, it, it marked out and it told you where all their nations were. It told you about all the nations. You got to be able to show me that every last one of their nations don't even exist now. That means that if this happened to them, that means Russia wouldn't exist. That means the Italians wouldn't exist. The, the Italy wouldn't exist. Britain wouldn't exist. Rome wouldn't exist if it happened to them. Because this particular people that's, that's marked out by these circumstances, they don't even have a nation anymore. They don't even have a name anymore. It said, but what will happen to this particular people is that their sons and their daughters would be given unto another people. He said, thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. They shall go into slavery. You got to be able to show me where we ourselves as Negroes had European, had the sons of Japheth as slaves as soon as they had their children. You got to be able to show where we, the Negroes, had Hamites, had African people as our slaves. As soon as they had their children, we took their children and made slaves. Can we show that? Because if you can't show that, then this set of circumstances belong to one particular people, the children of Israel. Now, let's look at the Negro. Now, even the history in the history book will tell you that as soon as our people had children while they were in slavery, that, that the mothers never enjoyed their children. For their sons and daughters were immediately taken away from them and then sold into the hands of other captors. What other people can line up with that? What other people, Christian preacher? What other people, my Islamic brother? What other people can line up with this set of circumstances? Verse 42. All thy trees and thy fruit and of thy land shall the locust consume. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. We reside in the Americas, black people. America is a, is a country that is composed of immigrants. But you as a descendant of a slave, are second in this country only to the Native American or the so-called Indian or the so-called whatever they want to call him. But out of all the people that have come into this country, they have came and they have gotten up over you very high. And each time one come and get up over you, you go down very low. When did you ever see the European businessman up under the Negro? When did you ever see the Native American man up under the Negro? When did you ever see the Hamite man up under the Negro? When did you ever see the Chinese man up under the Negro? <clears throat> you see, every people that ever came to this country he said, they shall get up over you very high, and you shall get very low before them. When did you ever see the Asian man come 
and then be beneath you in his circumstances in this world? When did you see him impoverished? Up under the Negro. This is another curse that identifies a particular people. There is no people in North, Central, and South America that is beneath the Negro. No matter how many people have came and arrived after the Negro, he have not climbed up over any of them to get up high. You would think that because he being here first, he should have a first priority or he should, when did you ever see the Negro get the reparations that they gave the Japanese person? When did you ever see the Negro get the reparations or the land that they gave the Jewish Holocaust survivor? When did you ever see the Negro get reparations that they gave to the Asian? When did you ever see anything that was ever done for the Negro that caused his life to flourish for his family? Thou, the stranger that is within you, that means that everything that comes after you, he shall get up above thee very high, and thou shall be brought very low. Even until this day. You see, other people cannot identify with these circumstances. Because you don't see a Hamitic man, an African man, up under the foot of a Negro. You see the Hamitic man or the African man owning stores and owning car lots and you see him in the medical industry as doctors and you see him doing all these things but you don't see the Hamitic or African man up under the Negro. You can't find the European man, the son of Japheth up under the foot of the Negro. And no matter where the Negro resides, when these people come in to become strangers amongst where they at, they get the high above us as a people. And we are brought very low as a people. Verse 44, and he shall lean unto thee, and thou shall not lean unto him. And he shall be the head, and thou shall be the tail. When they get thee high above us as a people, when do you ever see the European man come into any organization or any storefront or anything that a Negro possesses and borrowing money from him? When have you ever seen the African or the Hamitic man have to come to the Negro and get a loan to buy his house or buy his car? But God said, when you start looking at the signs that I put on Israel, you'll notice this, that not only will everybody get up high over him, he will also have to go to people outside of himself to borrow money. When have you ever seen the Negro go to his brother and be able to get a loan to buy his house, be able to get a loan to buy his car? No, you ain't seen it. But when do you ever see every Negro, every Israelite, when he won a loan, he got the go to that that have gotten high up over him. You see, he shall lend to you, but you shall never lend to him. Y'all see that? You're talking about black history. You're talking about prophecy coupled with the life that you live in right now to this day. And you have all that blocked out of your mentality because of what people are teaching that is in error when you can see clearly for yourself. All of my Negro brothers and sisters on the phone that reside in the Americas, where did you go to get your house? Who do you go to to rent an apartment? Who do you go to? Where do you go to buy your groceries? Where do you go to buy your gas? Where do you go to buy the things that you need? Where do you get the clothes on your back from? What is your people making? Where are your people's banks at? Where are your people's airlines at? Where are your people's car companies at? You see, your people ain't got none because it's part of God's method of identifying who true Israel is in the earth this hour. True Israel will have to borrow from other people that came after him and got high above him.
Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and shall overtake thee until thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not to the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commands you this day. One of the reasons why we're in the condition that we are and curses are steadily pursuing us with poverty. The curses of division of family service is still pursuing us, taking our children and giving them to another people. The, 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 these curses are still pursuing us. As our men go to jail, our women hook themselves up with other men, with other European men and things of that nature, where they're still betrothed in a wife and still another man is being the one that lies. These curses are pursuing us. Uh, why is Israel's point? For he is a people that's shut up and hidden in holes, hidden in prison houses. These curses are still pursuing our people as it declares that we'll be smitten before our enemy's face and we'll come out one way and flee Seven, we still been smitten before our enemy's face as the police kill us, as the court systems are against us. And all it, when do you see them happen to the European man, the Asian man, the Russian man, the Chinese man, the Italian man, the French man, the Irish man, the Welsh man, the Scythian, the Persian, the European, the Indo-European? When do you see them happening to the Indo man? When, when do you see them happening to the Hamite man? When do you see them happening to the Ethiopian, the Kushite? When do you see them happening to the Libyans? When do you see them happening to the modern day e Egyptians? When do you see these things happening? Where do you see them happening at? He said, moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and shall pursue thee and shall pursue thee because thou wilt hearken not to the voice of the Lord thy God to obey and do all that he'll command you. They're pursuing us because we will not hear our brother. When our brother tell us that the Messiah didn't have pale face, didn't have blonde, eye, uh, blonde hair and blue eyes. When we tell them that God's people don't have pale faces in the land of Israel. When we tell them that God's people can't be confused with Hamitic people. They don't want to hear that. They just, oh, well, Jesus is Lord. That's the only thing that matters. When we tell them that the letter J is only 500 years old and the Messiah walked over 2,000 years old and was a Hebrew man and therefore there's no way in the world that his name could possibly be Jesus when we tell them, they don't want to hear it and so the curses will continue to pursue and to pursue and to pursue and even though when they look in their life they can see these things that are written in the pages of the book rise up off the pages they still but that's okay because you will know the truth and the truth will make you free if you can receive it he said, and all these curses shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. And just the very fact that these curses are going to remain on our people forever is telling us that our people still ain't going to heed no matter what. They're going to remain forever and upon your children forever. And you wonder why our kids are out here killing each other for sport. It's because these curses are going to remain on our children and on our seed, our offspring forever because of what we won't do. We won't hear to obey the Lord thy God and do what he instruct us as a people. We still want to teach our children Christianity. We still want to teach them Islam. Never mind the fact that you can't find nowhere in neither the Bible or the Quran where is Islam, Islam, uh, Ishmael went into worldwide slavery. You can't find nowhere in the Bible where he got off a boat, where he got off a slave ship. You can't find nowhere in the Bible where no Christian's nation was broken up. You can't find that nowhere in the Bible, but our people still want to continue to teach these things to the next generation. And so these curses shall pursue thee, and shall pursue thee, and shall pursue thee until thou be destroyed. And they shall be upon their on their children as a sign and a wonder and constantly remind you, you are the reason why we are in this condition because you don't want to let go of the things that you have been taught, even though we can pull out the books, the history books, and the holy books and show you the same thing. They don't want it. Therefore thou shalt serve thy enemies, which the Lord God shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. 
I know you've seen it. You've seen it in the slave movies. You see it on the historical. Show me another people that had a yoke around their neck. Show me one Hamite, one African person that had a yoke around their neck as they were captured. Show me one European person that ever had a yoke around their neck. You know what a yoke is. A yoke is the thing that they put around our ancient ancestors' necks to keep them from running away. If they ran away, then that yoke would get caught up in the trees and they'll get hung in the trees. Show me another nation. Show me another people on the planet that can identify with these circumstances. Show me. Show me where Ishmael can identify with having a yoke around his neck. Show me where Christian can identify with having a yoke around his neck. Show me. Because you got to be able to show me these things. If you want, you got to be able to attach yourself to a particular people. And we already told you that Ishmael, Ishmael come from the loins of Shem. You had an Ishmaelite and then you had an Israelite that they were both brothers. Both had the same father. Some devil came in there along the way to make him think that he was something different. We walk together as brothers without foolishness. We knew who each other were. Now, all of these things have transpired. And Israelites and Ishmaelites don't understand that, that they're joined at the hip by blood of their father, not by no religious ideologies. Our job is to show our brothers the thing that gives us common ground. It's not the books that we read, but it is the circumstances that we face on a daily basis. This. You see? You see? Our Israelite descendants are born from the descendants of slaves. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from afar, from the end of the earth, as swift as an eagle flying, a nation whose tomb thou shalt not understand, a fierce nation. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young man. Show me where that fierce nation came from. Show me where that fierce nation came and sacked our brothers, our high might brothers. Show me where that fierce nation represented by the swiftness of an eagle. Show me where it came against there. Show me where Roman authority had jurisdiction to go in there and make captives out of the Africans, the Hamites. The Most High shall send a fierce nation against thee, as swift as the eagle fly. Roman authority is the fierce nation that was sent against the children of Israel. Roman authority, the fierce nation that would be represented by the eagle, ran the children of Israel into Hamitic lands where they ran smack dab into their Hamite brothers who in exchange sold them from the banks of West Africa into the hands of the same fierce nation, swift as an eagle, that would be represented by the eagle who would have no regard for the old man, would beat the old man until he was dead and show the young man no favor, would send the three-year-old baby into the cotton field or tie a rope around the 12-month-year-old the, the kid and throw him in the mouth of an alligator. You show me another people that this happened to. A nation with fierce countenance, full of hatred toward a people Show me a person, show me another country, another nation that can identify with the circumstances that the Negro faced. Oh, you can see clearly 
the fierce nation of fierce countenance that hung a people in trees, set a people on fire, castrated a people, killed their children, killed their old men, killed the women, raped the women. You can identify the fierce nation that would not regard the old or the young. You can identify him by his circumstances. And you can identify the Hamite, which is also playing his part. This fierce nation whose tongue you would not know. Show me another people that it happened to. Show me. Can anybody show me another people that it happened to? Yet we are not concerned about our genealogy anymore. And when you ain't concerned about your genealogy, your genealogy is attached to your purpose. Your purpose. I am the Lord thy God. I change not, Abraham. Because of the promise I made you, that's the reason why your sons are not consumed. I attach a purpose to your children that must fulfill itself in this world. I ain't changing my mind about that. So we'll keep raising them up. God ain't changing his mind about what he promised Abraham. That's why no matter what atrocities we as a people have been through, systematically or otherwise, we have not being destroyed, nobody will ever be able to destroy because of our purpose. But we can destroy ourselves because of a lack of understanding of our purpose. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle, the fruit of thy land, until thou be destroyed, which thou you know what? He eating the fruit of your cattle and the fruit of your land. You know, let me show you something. You got brothers and sisters all the time that say things like, well, can we have anything to ourselves? Not according to the most high. You ain't never having nothing to yourself. He shall eat the fruit of your cattle and the fruit of your land. Every good thing that you come up with. Oh, he invented the light bulb. Nope, give me that. Oh, he invented the iron. Black man invented. Nope, give me that. Oh, black man invented the microphone, the radio. Oh, black man invented the stoplight. Nope, no, he didn't. Black man invented how to moonwalk, how to pop like. Oh, nope, give me that. No, he didn't. Black man invented R&B, blues, country and western. Oh, no, he didn't. Give me that too. Oh, black man invented this. You see, he shall eat up the fruit of thy land and thy cattle. You shall have nothing. And everything that we think that we got that's good, it's just a matter of time before he come along and eat it up. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until the high and fenced in walls come down. Wherein thou trusted throughout all thy land and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land, which the Lord God had given to thee. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thy own body and the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord God had given thee in the siege and in the straightness where, wherewith thy enemies shall distress thee. Now, People always get mad. They always get mad when we start telling them about flesh and blood. You see, because when the Bible said, when God said one of the curses upon you, it's going to be you shall eat the flesh of your sons and your daughters. 
He means just that. You know why? Because we have lost our ability to farm. We have lost our ability to produce things. We have lost our ability to uh, take care and assume responsible responsibility for ourselves as a people. We have become totally dependent upon the people that have dealt treacherously with us. And as a means to keep us in a place to where we continue to go against the most high, we put our trust in them and they do things to us that are Without our knowledge, one of the things that they do is they feed you back your own kidnapped children, your own children that have died, your own children that have suffered, your own children. They'll feed them right back to you because you have developed such a dependency upon them that you ain't even aware of the things that you're putting in your own body. I shall eat the fruit. You shall eat your own sons and daughters. And when we come to tell you that mixed up in all the flesh and blood that you're running out here to eat is grinded up children, some uh, two, three hundred thousand of them that are kidnapped from year to re from year to year are grinded up with the flesh and blood that you're eating. There's no way in the world that the animals on this planet can sustain six billion people on the planet. Well, I don't have to listen to your brother. But go listen to what the doctor tell you you just got. He about to tell somebody they got something that don't even exist. You ain't never even heard of it before. The tender, delicate woman among you which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for her delicateness and her tenderness. Her eyes shall be evil toward her husband, the husband of her bosom, and toward her son and toward her daughter. Tell me that you can find a white woman out there that has a, such a hatred toward her husband and hates her children. To the, tell me where you can show a whole nation of sisters that have turned haters on men. Show me. Show me. Show me where you can find another nation of people that the women and the men have developed a hatred, not just for each other, but a hatred to the point to where they only want to even assume the responsibility for their own children. Show me where the Africans do it, who can still be in a polygamous relationship and produce 25 children and the man still be with all the women. Show me, show me that, the, that happening to a Hamite man. Show me it happening to the European man. Show me. She was once tender. <laughs> now her eye is evil. <laughs> Toward. I don't need no husband. Niggas ain't shit. I don't need no man. I can do bad, I can do bad all by myself. Show me where you can find another white woman. What out there talking about? European man ain't shit. <laughs> I can do without his ass. I don't need him. Sh show me, show me another one. Show me another nation of people that you can find doing that. Her eyes shall be evil toward her husband, the bosom, uh, husband, uh, the husband of her bosom, and shall be and, and toward her son, and toward her daughter, and toward her young one that comes from out between her feet, and toward her children, which she shall bear. For she shall eat them for want of all things in the siege and straightness wherewith thy enemy shall distress thee. See, remember in Luke 21st chapter, he said, these be the days of vengeance that all things that are written must be fulfilled. Let them flee out of the city because there shall be great distress in the land. During this particular time, there was great distress in the land. The, the Romans had cut everything off. They cut the food off. They cut the water off. They cut all types of sustenance off to where the people couldn't survive. They wouldn't have the strength to fight back. During this particular time, the woman's eye would be evil toward her husband because she's thinking about how she's going to preserve herself and she's going to preserve herself by eating that child that came from between her feet because she couldn't get no sustenance during the times of great distress. They're being eaten up right now. 
Why our sisters out here a cussed a little kid out? Cussed them, you little raggedy mother, you little bee. You, you cussed the children out. Don't care who they say it in front. In Walmart, I see it all the time. A slap a kid clean across the room and call him everything up under the sun. Her eyes shall be evil. Not just toward the man, but her eye going to be evil toward the children because every time she look at them, she think of him and her eye will turn evil against them. And it's the distress that's being put on us by our enemies. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear the glory, this glorious and fearful name of the Lord God, the Lord thy God, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance and of sore sickness and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou was afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. And also every sickness and every plague, which is not even written in the book of the law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas you were as the stars of heaven for the multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God, and it shall come to pass that as the Lord thy, as the Lord rejoiceth over you to do you good, to multiply you, so the Lord shall rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to nothing, and you shall be plucked from off the land wherever thou goest to possess it. And our people were plucked off the land when they ran from Jerusalem and flee into the mountains of Africa, they were plucked off the land that they were familiar with as the Hamites sacked them and sold them into the hands of the Portuguese who put them on ships and sold them in North Central South America and removed them far from their borders. They were plucked off the land that they knew because they refused to hear what the word says. And the Lord shall scatter thee from among all the people, from one end of the earth even unto the other. There thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Gods of even wood and stone. Show me any place. Show me where the European man ceased. His, his, his nation ceased to exist because he was sold into slavery. Show me where the four Nations of Africa have been scattered into every place on the planet as slaves. Show me that. Show me that, Christian brother. Show me that, Christian brother, that's mixed up with the European heathens. Show me anywhere where one European nation was broken up and they became our slaves. Show me, show me, show me my, my Ishmaelite brothers. Show me one place in the scripture where my brother Ishmael became my slave along with slaves to all the other nations. Show me, because you know what? You can stay, y'all can stay stuck in these books, but we're talking about history. We're talking about the life that you live in. Every Negro that reside in North Central and South America didn't come here except by way of slave ships. And our brothers and sisters, they can talk about the Moors and they can talk about all. Oh, show me one place where we had Moors as slaves. We were one family. The Moors are Israelites. Moors are Israelites that walked side by side. They're Ishmaelite brothers as they converted to Islam by the sword which was another curse that was put on Israel for not doing what he was supposed to do. Our own brother hand would be turned against us. Show me. Show me. Because we were not a conquering people. And everything that's black is not a Negro. Well, I already know.
Show me someplace else where we would become worshipers of gods that would be represented by wood and stone. There ain't but two religious constructs that are dominant in this world. Show me some other nation who lost everything. And then they became worshiping. You see, when you talk about talking about a European worshiping a, a wood, you have to understand that the wood was a sign of Roman authority. It had nothing to do with Yeshua. It's nothing coincidental about a European man worshiping wood. Show me that. There ain't nothing coincidental about our Ishmaelic brothers or uh, worshiping a cobblestone, a rock that fell from heaven. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing strange about that. Because that's what their things are built on. What's strange about it is you. Because God said this was what you would do in your ignorance. You would reach out and you would start worshiping things that he never gave you to worship. The Lord shall scatter thee from amongst all the people of the earth. Show me the people. Show me another people on the earth who got scattered and sprinkled into every nation on the planet. According to the prophecies of the Messiah, they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Then shall be led away as slaves into all nations. That's Luke 21st chapter verses 20 through 24. Show me another nation that happened. Show me another nation that that happened to. Where they all, if that was the case, we the Negroes, we would have had slaves up under us doing our beating, doing our service. Show me. Show me another nation who would become worshipers of gods that they didn't know. The European man know the God of Christianity. The Islamic man know the God of Islam. Show me another people who would not be attached to Christianity or Islam that would become worshipers of both things that they worship. Show me another people that it happened to. These curses shall be upon thee and upon thy seed as a sign and a wonder until thou be destroyed. For not hearkening. Show me another people. Then we tell a people. Oh, you can't claim that for your belief. You think they want to hear that? Nope. They don't want to hear that. And among these nations. Thou shall find no ease. Neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there. A trembling heart. And failing eyes. And a sorrow of mind. Show me that the Negro Islamic man in this country don't have a trembling heart when the police get by him. Show me that the Negro Christian in this country don't have a trembling heart when the police get by. Oh no, if you're not Israel, you wouldn't be affected by these things. If you're not Israel, you don't have a trembling heart, Islamic man, Christian man. If you're not Israel, your eyes don't fail with longing all the day, Islamic man, Christian man. If you're not Israel, then you don't go through the circumstances of poverty and imprisonment and being cast down. If you're not Israel, these things won't affect you. Tell me that you got the same life of your European counterparts. Tell me. Tell me that you got the same rights as the Islamic man that owned the local gas station. Tell me that you live in the same neighborhoods. Tell me that you got the same oil money that your Is Islamic brother down there got. Tell me that you live in the same suburbs of your Christian future. Tell me, Christian pastor, that you got the same life that John Hagan got. Tell me that you live in the same neighborhood. Tell me that you don't have the same struggles with money. Tell me that you can lend to your people and not borrow anything. If you can't tell me that you're in the same category, then baby, I don't care what you call yourself. The Lord has smited thee with madness and blindness and the astonishment of heart because no matter what you call yourself, your circumstances are still the same. There is no place that
that you can run to get off from up under these circumstances that God put on one people. I don't care what you call yourself. With that, I'm going to end the video right there.